I, I'm actually having, uh, I was having technical difficulties myself. <laughs> uh, so we are live and go ahead and share this right quick. Brian was supposed to come on. Um, I'm not sure if he's going to pop up a little bit later or not. Okay. Hey guys, um, if you're tuning in, uh, we're just going through those first couple of minutes where we are sharing the um, the live. So just bear with us for just one moment here. Hey. All right, let's see. Now, do you have more than one um, gadget open? No. Okay. Normally I do, but tonight I don't. Okay. Loving the hair. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> And I love the love language thing. I was um I was at my brother's house and I was listening while we was watching something, so I I couldn't get on a video. I'm glad that you enjoyed it. I hope that more people will take an interest in that and learn the true potency of speaking someone's love language. Yeah. Um and another reason why I was like I would love to give you a chance to um, do that on the show as well, because um, I think there's like a doorway to a lot of some of the miscommunication that's going on. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, you have some people that actually know the person love language and just refuse to use it. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> those are the worst <laughs> yes. and to be honest when you have situations like that I cover that in my book True Speak as you're reading you'll get to the, the uh, snippet that addresses that issue specifically there are right. some problems that good communication won't solve because the problem is that person's character and the choices that they're making that those issues are disguised as communication issues not being willing to speak someone's love language is stubbornness. And that has nothing to do with communication, but it'll look like it is because you've expressed over and over what the love language is and that person just isn't responding or isn't choosing to respond. So mm. yeah, absolutely. We will definitely get into those topics. Mm, 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 mm. There's so many of y'all out there. Shame on y'all. <laughs> make no sense. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, um, uh, Thank you for tuning in to the Sofa Real Talk. And I do believe that we have a juicy um, topic. And before I indulge on this lovely topic, I would like to say uh, welcome back to Miss Evelyn, the author of Truth Speak. And, you know, we had her on for her first chapter last week. So I have to um, read second, the second chapter and we will have her on so that she can go over the second chapter, uh, which that is coming up soon for me to uh, start reading. But, Miss Evelyn, if you don't mind um, introducing yourself. Thank you. It is always a privilege to be with you on your um, on Sofa Real Talk. I am Evelyn Whitney author of the book, True Speak, Some Real Reasons Men and Women Don't Communicate. And that's been a specific burden for me in the journey to write this book so that I could help people navigate through the problems that they're having in their relationships, not just personal relationships, but all of them. Because as you improve the way that you communicate, you will inevitably improve every single one of the relationships that you hold. Hmm. Speak it, girl. Speak it. <laughs> <laughs> and um, um, Laron, a lot of you guys know me already, but I am the um, the how can I say it? Um, I am part of the mastermind of this show. Um, my other partner is more of a um, background person. Uh, she's kind of shy, which 
we both are and you just really don't understand how hard it is for me to press the live button sometimes because of my shyness but hey it is what it is so the topic today is whoo boy i tell you a woman's place in parentheses why do men feel women are out of line and Ms. Evelyn, have you ever heard this stated around you personally that women are out of line? Yes, I have heard it said that women are out of line. And one of the first things that I would like to um, introduce this discussion with is the premise of how subjective lines are. Hmm. If I am told that I am out of line, does that mean that I've actually done something that is objectively wrong? Most times it doesn't. I could just be out of line in someone's estimation because they don't personally like what I did. That doesn't mean that I've actually committed some type of crime. Okay. Most of the times when I hear a man say specifically that a woman is out of line, it is under that guise that that concept is presented to her. She has done something that he does not personally approve of. Therefore, in his estimation, she is out of line, though technically she's not done anything wrong. Okay, I can um, I can concur with that. I um, if we were to go into um, the little going online a little bit, I come across where definition of um when we talk about a woman's place uh, we must go back to the days where men expect their women to take on the roles as a maid to a degree a woman that did what she was told and dared never to talk back but fortunately for them they themselves and i am speaking like going back into the form of slavery days or even possibly as far back as like ancient greece um women still had their form of maids as well um but it saddens me to see how the adaptation of the role changed for the better over the years to so now men feeling as though the need for women to know their place as um as a um no right counterpart is like it goes over my head and what i mean about that is is where they are wanting the women to go back to the point of not um, per se having you know the rights that they have now. How women are fighting so hard to have that equal status that they feel that they deserve. Mm -hmm. And Absolutely. I think that, in which we're going to get into um, something that you basically stated in your book uh, and I'm gonna I'll let you um, piggyback off of that a little bit in just a second but it was something that you said in the book that we're I'm gonna highlight in just a second so um, how do you feel about that most of the time on the other side of everything that I've explained about the presentation of a woman's place it has its origins in very traditional mindsets men are supposed to do this women are supposed to do that and there is no separation mm -hmm. but uh for those who were able to view on last week you were talking about the explanations of a woman the definitions and things of that sort yes the implicit authority of the male is much of the concept behind a woman's place Okay. People who feel that because he is the man, he is automatically right above anything that the woman might have to say are those who adopt this mindset of a woman's place and how easily she can get out of line. Moving apart from the historical context of the reasons that women have joined the workforce, such as World War II, like you were saying, when all yeah. of the men were off fighting, who's back at the house? making the bullets, who's in the factories producing the weapons, who's doing all of those other things that society needs to run while those men were away. 
fighting the various war. Yeah. The question became after that point, when it's visible that a woman can function competently outside of the walls of the home, there are men who do not appreciate that. And I'm going to make this parallel. There might be people who disagree with it, but they'll see the relevance if they just lend themselves to consider what I'm saying. Okay. The same, the same thing happens when certain black citizens achieve a certain level of success that white people don't believe that they deserve to have accomplished. Then you see the racism coming out toward that person's success. When women succeed, you see that sexism coming out from men against their success. And what is and what the attempt becomes to try to put her back in that place, put her back in the home and leave her there and act as if the competence that she has has no value unless it is for the convenience of the man raising his children, keeping his house clean, keeping his kids fed and him with food and things of that sort. So that's wow. where the idea of her place always comes back to fruition, putting her back in the home as the only place that anything she does has any respect or confidence capability. So like in your book, I highlight that really sticks out to me is the conversation about Adam and Eve. <laughs> Neither Adam nor Eve has had dysfunctional upbringing against which to contend. Neither of them just got out of a bad relationship and has something on which to blame the new intended. Yes. So I personally you know, me and Lisa, you know, we talk about Adam and Eve so much. It's crazy. It's like uh, it's like almost a, a, a big pastime for us. <laughs> um, for me, I feel the creation and the design of them was to pretty much initiate what a relationship is. And unfortunately, they fell horribly at it. And I don't even think it was, they fell at the eating of the so-called fruit. I don't really think that was the biggest fail. The biggest fail was the fact that they were supposed to have each other's back. Hmm, okay. And so even though she wandered off, you know, um, you shouldn't have to always keep tabs on your woman. And I'm, I'm speaking in today's time. Absolutely. She should be able to wander off, you know, every once in a while, if not her checking in, you checking in on her and vice versa. So um, this days and time, Adam and Eve, let's say this happened like now. And so her coming back with something that she was supposed to have, this man knew darn well that one that wasn't the original fruit in that basket that she so-called brought, or whatever the case may be. He knew something was strange about it. And the fact that he wasn't man enough to sit up here and say, Hey, sweetie, um, you do know God said we shall not eat from that because it's a bad thing, right? So mm -hmm. we no, go put that back where you got it from. No, you know, he allowed her to, which stated in the Bible, you know, he, he was convinced by her to partake in the sin per se. And so then, you know, everybody knows the story. God comes down and then, hey, you know, where y'all at? They're hiding. And my thing was, that was a great, those two opportunities for him to say, hey, no. We can't do that. Mm -hmm. and even though I've already eaten it, now the fact that I'm hiding and I'm pointing the blame on her, which I supposed to be the man, which I supposed to be the head, you know, I supposed to take that that bullet as 
the men in our days supposed to say the woman stands in the back that basically what he, he did not do well what yeah. about the other side of that just mm -hmm. as a consideration point the instruction was given to anime this the this part of the discussion that we're having right now is not in the pages of my book but just as a point of what you're mentioning the authority i'm going to say that adam should have had as the protector of his wife what about the idea that both of them receive the instruction not to eat the fruit yes he knew that she did he decided to take the fall with her in eating it okay that is a, a different uh, presentation of leadership particularly as we're talking about today's man. There are men who say, women should do what I say just because I said it and that's what they should do. Okay. When they won't take responsibility for anything that happens as a result of what she's doing. And that's what I felt like he didn't do. Even though he did go ahead and bite and fall with her, I think mm -hmm. at the end, um, oh, okay, I didn't see him back there. I'm sorry, Brian. <laughs> My bad, Brian. I I didn't see you down there, sir. <laughs> it's all it's all good. I didn't, I was trying not to. Hello, I was trying not to hit you there. But I said, man, I sent three messages. He ain't seen yet. <laughs> My bad. But I I don't. My thing is, and I definitely hear that being a possibility of of him taking that fall with her or was taking ownership. But then at the end, when God comes down and asks or asks him questions, it was more or less of, uh, you know, I don't want to take this. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Let me take and get this. <laughs> no, I don't, don't want to take this. I thought I did, but no, 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 no. You know, and mm -hmm. we do that. And my thing is, I know a lot of men that will or have had their partner give them ideas and there are great ideas and the fact that they just they just couldn't execute them like they were supposed to because one they might have not listened like they were supposed to and since it failed they come back and they blame her and it's all her fault and, and, and you no know, especially if it has something to do with i lost my job because i listened to you mm -hmm. so, yes I, that has happened absolutely I feel like that opened the door and which goes to the point of me um, having um, Genesis 316 when he says to the woman, I will make your pains and uh, childbirth uh, very severe with painful labor. You will give birth to children. Your desire will be for your husband and he will rule over you. I honestly feel if that would have played out totally different if he would have stuck by her. That punishment would have been in that to that degree. It would have been more of a still equal form of partnership. I think that then it's just my opinion. It's how I look at it and it's not pushing it on anybody or anything. But I just really think that Adam and Eve is the recipe for why relationships are damaging the way that they are but the fact that a lot of us may even feel that way or even know that the relationship is not what it should be and that going back to what you were stating behind stage about um obama and beyonce and um jay-z where once you see you you find what's going on in a relationship and there may be some imbalance and you sit down amongst each other and you find a recipe a blueprint and then you end up both of you become blessed off of the um the routes that you're taking and going back to what i was stating about uh miss obama and how you stated that um her standing back and allowing him to be president and how folks feel like she um, and her form of submit was not the slavery submit. It was a submission of, hey, it's my partner's time to shine. And what he's going after is going to put me in a position. 
I can even want to throw in a reference of um the Avengers, the end game. She saw the end game of him being put in that position and what can come out of it. And that's what we're not looking at. I have two quick points on that. Um, you are absolutely right about the position that the Obamas had taken. It's almost like walking, you know, in order for your body as a whole to get anywhere, one foot in the one foot in front of the other needs to be one foot in front of the other. And then it switches to the other one and then switches to the other one and switches to the other one. That's how the relationship of the body moves forward because it's this time and then it's this time, and it's this one, and then it's this one. And that's how they move forward as a unit. The second thing I wanted to say about the, the point of how people are viewing their demonstration of submission and headship, which is the counterpart to submission. Most of the men who are yelling about what a woman's submission should look like aren't doing half the things that Barack Obama was doing for her or for his profession. <laughs> So it's arguable to me well, that they hold my microphone so I can drop it right quick. <laughs> <laughs> so it's arguable to me and obviously humorous that these people are trying to command a type of respect that their actions don't support them even knowing how to handle if they had it. Can I can I also add because I said this last year in another show that we did um, last year, but this idea of submission, first of all, God was talking about between a husband and a wife. He was not talking about your situation. He's not talking about uh, cohabitation without, without marriage. He was talking about a husband and wife. And I think that term is just thrown around too loosely mostly by men. Um, and by and, Christians nonetheless, but go ahead. Well, yeah, I just think that, that people keep, it bothers me internally. I don't really outwardly say this, but as I'm getting older, I'm starting just to not GAF what people think. So my thing is this, like it bothers me when people try to equate um, a monogamous relationship or a relationship or a situationship and try to put on the same playing field as a marriage. It ain't. Well, at least not in the way, not in the way that, you know, I believe in my faith, right? But that's that's not a hint on there. But to your point, um, Miss Evelyn, you're right. A lot of men who are asking for this submissive partner are not doing the things that God commanded that men are supposed to be doing. They're not providing. They're not protecting. They're not even really professing. So right. professing their love, exactly. You know, for their significant others or you know their families. I'm not even specific. I'm just. I mean, you know, in general. So mm -hmm. you can't ask for CEO privileges if you're not willing to truly do CEO responsibilities. Because a man is supposed to make sure that his family's covered. Mm -hmm. That. Even in the event that he is no longer here on this side of earth, that the family is still taken care of, how can you do that if you're not even willing to legally assign your, your estate or whatever that you have over to this woman that you claim to love? And that's what gets me irritated, especially when people say, oh, marriage is just a piece of paper. It's so much more than that. It's yeah. so much more symbolism behind it. It's so much more real, true, rooted meaning of what God intended. But the mm -hmm. truth of the matter is, if you truly love your woman or your family, then why not go through the necessary stuff so that in the event something happens to you, when you've been out here providing, protecting, and professing, that they will have, they could still continue on, or they will have some legal claim to it. So my, thing, so my thing, you got guys out here who say this stuff, but you're not even willing to put your woman on the deed to the house. You're not even willing to add as authorized user on the credit card. Like, come on, brothers. I mean, come on, man. So I think that word, that term is thrown around too loosely. It is. I agree. Absolutely. I so, fully agree with that. Lisa and says, 
not to cut you off, Ms. Evelyn, sorry. Let me read these comments real quick. Um, so, so long as a man has shared a vision, a woman can follow and play her role and fill her place as a woman. Um, Ms. Tashawn says, yes, husband and wife. Uh, Lisa agrees with you, Brian. Uh, she also states that what it should be for a marriage. Um, Ms. Tashawn also says, amen. And now y'all talking to them about uh, a woman's place. <laughs> and uh, the, I don't know. It's just, again, I for, for some odd reason, I've always been this person and I've always felt. And I just, and it may come from seeing my parents and seeing what type of worth my mom was not because of how my dad cherished her is because of what i saw my mom um parent all of my friends um mm -hmm. at some point um maybe not all of my friends but a, a great deal of my friends referred to her as mom um she took us to practice um my mom cooked and maybe we didn't have that much food so she showed me personally where um if i have somebody beside me we can be great and that's what i saw that's what i thought i was going out to do myself but i was too young to <clears throat> at the time and and trying to do basically what brian was talking about at a young age and so, uh, yeah, that didn't go good. One of the things that I would like to also um, clarify in this discussion, when we're talking about the symbiosis of the relationship between a husband and a wife, many people don't recognize that they feel like the wife's responsibilities are somehow less important than the man's if she's at home raising the children and he's out working and you know earning money in that regard. That's one thing that I would like to undo, but as a society at large, there is not enough respect given to how difficult it is to raise children. I do not have any children and that is a choice that I made because I don't want any children, but I am not a woman who is willing to say I'm going to look down on you as a woman just because that's what you want to do. There are women who have taken that attitude, and I think it is very erroneous of a position for them to have. But the important place behind that is one of the ideas became in the work that women do outside the home. Much of it is still related to child care. It's still related to being somebody's support. It's still related to that type of uh, manifestation of her competencies. And that's bothersome to me because if women are pigeonholed into those roles and that is supposed to be our designated responsibility in all of society, not just in the home, but in all of society, why doesn't why don't men in general provide their equal part? in what the woman's role is supposed to be in society. That never happens. It's been said before, as we talked a little bit about the um, Kevin Samuels video that he was talking to the young woman specifically about a woman's place. He said that the majority of the degrees that women get are pretty much useless. They're I was in, actually about to play that part. They're in, Okay, well, if you'd like to, please go ahead so that people yeah, can have a reference. I was and finish actually my about. Yeah, but <laughs> you live in peace with a man. Can you submit to a man? Can you play the background? When you say play the background, what do you mean play the background? Play your natural role. My natural role in being a wife? Yes, the background. I don't think a natural a natural role as a wife is in the background. Show me where in the world a natural wife is in front. She's not in front, but she's beside. No, she's not. Well, she's not, Kevin. Are you out of your French toast mind? Don't start. Don't do that now, Kevin. I'm, I'm just giving you my opinion. Okay. Well, when a burglar comes, are you standing side? When somebody's coming to break in the house, are you side by side by side your husband? Or are you standing behind him because he's going to have to take the bullet? To be honest, 
I'm standing beside my husband. Then you out. Then you out of place. Why am I out of place? <laughs> oh my Tell god. Me how, am I too oh, masculine for it? Oh, oh my god. Hell yeah. Your place. Oh my god. Hold on. Why are you, you out of place? I'm telling you why you're out of place. Your I'm place right. is be, behind your husband, guarding the children. Okay. Two a million years. Okay. So when your mother, how about your grandmother? Okay. Hold on, Hannah. Your because grandmother was she married? That's another thing, Mr. Kevin. Hold on, hold on, Hannah. Let me come right back to you. Let me come back to you, Hannah. Was your grandmother married? Yes, my grandmother was. But that's the thing with I'm trying to. Miss, I'm trying to get to. I thought it was, I was already there by the part that you was referring to. Friday or Saturday night, and you'll see a mama. You may see her with her mother and a bunch of kids. There will be no husband. And it, well, how many women at that point in time had degrees? And education. Oh, there you go. Everybody. Oh, what the fuck does your degree mean? Yes. Why doesn't it mean anything? What is your degree in? But why doesn't it mean? What is, what is it? What's the degree in? That's not the question. I yes, it is. Yes, it is. No, no. I tell you. No, no. Because, because almost ninety percent of the degrees women get are in humanities. That's not the question, though. Mr. Yes, it is. That's not it. You don't seem to understand. A I'm fucking commu a fucking communications degree is pointless. How is it pointless? And who says I'm, I'm my education and my degree is in Okay, if you want to play the game with me, I'll play with you. If you want to bring up degrees, you're going to have to be specific. What percentage of women get degrees that are in science, engineering, technology, or math? Infrastructure. It, I don't think that matters. That's your problem. You don't understand what's important. What's important, then, Mr. Sanders? Who is that? <laughs> <laughs> okay. To, um, I'm so glad that you played it right at the time that I was making those points. When he's talking about the unimportance of her degree, he is outlandishly dismissing any personal goals that she might have, anything that she might want to do or envision for her life. And he is equating her to only be what she is her best at, at the convenience of whoever her husband is. That is not what I believe the presentation of the male and wife counterpart together in marriage manifests as. As a woman who has studied computer science, architectural drafting, engineering, and worked for a builder, what I would like for him to know at one point is women are just as intellectually capable of doing all of those jobs. There was an article that I read in Time Magazine that speaks to this point exactly. Women are just as intellectually capable of doing those jobs. The reason that you don't have as many women occupying those fields oh. is that the interest is not there. Women are as interested in those types of fields as men are. So for his supposition that women are somehow intellectually inferior to men because they don't go into those fields, that is intellectually dishonest. The simple okay. fact is women are just as capable of doing those things, but the interest is just not there. As a separate point on this matter, if you look at the situations of those women who do have interest in those fields, there was a movie that came out. It was called No Country. It was a woman on the construction site who actually ended up suing the construction company for the ways that those men sexually abused her and for the ways that they were treated. More recently, there was a woman who had taken out a, a lawsuit against her tech company because she was the only software programmer and all of the men in her unit were very disrespectful to her and they constantly talked about sexist things right in front of her and made comments such, very similar to the ones that Kevin Samuel has made about her place and how she's not supposed to be there. None of those attitudes that men carry about women speak to the woman's intellectual capability. And the last thing I'll say on this is that even if you take the military, women who want to serve this country are persuaded against doing that because they have seen the news that when women go to the um, when women go into service, they are raped and nothing happens to their rapists. They are discriminated against sexually and nothing happens to the people who are doing these these demeaning things to women who just want to serve their country. So the idea that women are somehow intellectually inferior to men because we don't engage in certain roles is intellectually it's wrong, number one. And it's intellectually dishonest for him to make the comparison of people who build the cities and build the streets and build the cars as a 
position of doing that being somehow lorded over the woman. She is just as intellectually capable, but if she's not interested or if she is scared away from following that interest because of how she will be treated in that process, those things are not considered in his fallacy of women in the STEM field. Hey, so you're actually kind of <laughs> in my head with that. Um, first, let me say it's sad that he goes on a rant like he's going and doesn't have the degrees that he's saying that a man should have himself. And that's the sad <laughs> part about it. And, but that goes back to what you were saying, how it's so sad that the men that tend to want a woman to be put in her place or know her role are those that aren't playing a the the correct supposedly man role in the first place and so i did some digging and i came across where um it stated back in 1950s women were um and guys, this information that I'm just um, briefly pulling some stuff out of, it's in the description. So if you want to read over it, you can go to the description and read more into it. But the um, Mrs. Degree, and it's capitalized, M-R-S, um, meaning a husband, um, they were going to college to get a husband, per se. Um, and it goes to where you were stating, Evelyn, about even though the women had asked, you know, um, aspirations for other type of um, things that they wanted to do, still their goal was to find a husband. Exactly. And, 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 and are, well, let, let me say this. Um, there's two things I want to say. The first is I want to address our dear, confused, misinformed brother, uh, Kevin Samuel. He sounds like a dude who probably he dislikes women. Oh yeah, that's pretty he, much he, he dislikes women. The way he comes at it, the way he tries to not only be this is beyond him being condescending, uh mm -hmm. he's downright rude and mm -hmm. assertive and abrasive and insulting, which yeah. to me Absolutely. cannot you cannot get anyone to see your point. Well, hear your point if you're going to belittle them, degrade yeah. them, mean them, and try to humiliate them. And it seems like that's his goal every time. His goal is not women empowerment. His goal is women humiliation. And yeah. so for me, I can't take him seriously, right? Because I fundamentally believe... Thank you. Yeah, because I truly believe in the partnership between men and women. All right, especially a husband and wife in marriage. I believe in that because Absolutely. if I didn't have a purpose for the woman, he wouldn't have created it. Okay, that's the first point I want to make. The second point to your point back to this historical time piece that you referenced just now, uh, I also find that to be a very um, sort of kind of crossroads in, the, in, in our history just because if you think about it, when men were going to war in World War II, Mm -hmm. it, was, it was women who had the whole I stated that, yeah. So my thing is, if it was good enough for them to hold down these jobs while while most of the men were going to war, then how then can we not see them as someone on equal footing with us? Because when it suited us, we had to depend on a woman to keep the country going while the men were off at war. So I just, I just, I just, I find that time piece to be really, really odd. But you know what? Even though you say that, Brian, when they came back home, they were very disgusted because, and a lot of them went into deep depression because they couldn't get their jobs or the women were doing what they were um, doing and didn't want to go back home. And so it's, I feel the same way, and, and when I heard that, that's what made me go and find a little um the picture or you know the woman with the bandana on and you know showing 
I made a, I actually did a video about that and and I feel the same way. So this, like you saying, you, you, you're over there protecting us. And not even that, there were one, there were women in the war, in that same war as well, um, doing nursing and making sure that you, you know, they were doing due yeah. diligence. Flight mechanics, you said, and yeah. some of them were driving trucks and repairing some yeah. of the airplanes, which yeah. I'm sure she could not have been trusted to do that if she wasn't capable of it. Exactly. So going back to you, Miss Evelyn, where they just position block. That's how I see it. Um, a lot of women are position block. So Absolutely. because if even with you stating like how um, even though it's off topic and you know how a um, it, it could go as far as a black female. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and say it. So um, a lot of not all whites, but a lot of whites have position and have made blacks feel that in order for us to be looked at professionally, um, be triumphant, we have to do what they're doing. And so that's what we go after. And so once we go after it and we shame them because we do it better then there was, that's the problem. And so as that can, parallel, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, you can also look at that as being with the man as well. So they come back home and they see that here, my partner that was in the house wearing a maid's dress almost to the point, or, or not a maid's dress, but a dress and an apron and cooking my meals while I was going and doing my professional job. But then I got enlisted. Now I come back. She's holding the house down, maybe even got a bigger house now. And she has a car in her name. And what my one of my legs may be gone because they got shot off. Now I feel lesser than a man because my woman is having to hold the house down because society has told me that in order to be a man, I have to be in charge. And that mentality demonstrates the attitude that we always come across when we're dealing with this woman's place discussion. Many men feel that the only purpose a woman will ever serve is his convenience. Sex mm. when he wants, food mm. when he wants, watching his kids, and that's it. If she cannot do those things, she is considered worthless. Now, even as we consider the misgivings of certain men, we have to think that they would not leave their children in the care of someone they didn't believe was competent to care for them. So in that case, a woman's competence isn't what he fights with. What his issue is, her earning potential. If she has the potential to earn more money than he does, then he has a problem with it. Outside mm. of his convenience, her capabilities don't have any value to him. That's how many people see a woman's place. That's how many men view it. And as we began, I made the point that accusing someone of being out of place doesn't necessarily confirm that what they've done is actually wrong. It's just right. wrong in your estimation. Yes. So when these men are saying, woman, you're out of place, that doesn't really mean that she's done anything wrong. It just means that that's how he chooses to express his dismay for the things that she has done. You have wronged me, basically. It can, <laughs> I, and I, it can also say to this whole thing about out of place and submission, you know, I mean, a lot, a lot is being left out of context when they're talking about it. Again, I say it comes from a biblical perspective, talking about yes. between a husband and a wife, not a boyfriend, a girlfriend. Husband right. and a wife, not a bae. Husband and a wife, okay, not a boo thing, okay? So <laughs> I want to refer everyone to the scripture of Ephesians 5, 22 and 23. Yes, uh, thank you. Yeah, where he said, where uh, Paul, um, speaking to the church, said, wives, submit to your husbands and to the Lord, for the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church, his body, which is the Savior. But the next part, the next verse, the next part of that is the part that gets lost. 
husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her to make her holy. See, the thing that men don't understand, because the Bible, because Paul also said he who loves his wife also loves himself after all, no one ever hated his own body, but he feeds and cares for it just as Christ does the church, so we are members of his body. All right? So, what that is saying is, is that you have to be able to be as loving to your to your wife as you would be to your own self, meaning that you wouldn't intentionally go and slice your own wrist, right? Mm -hmm. Intentionally take a fist and punch yourself in the eye, right? Yet there are men who do this to women on a daily basis and call themselves men, whether they're married or not. But yet you want all of this you want all of these privileges that you have misconstrued, mm -hmm. uh, have misread, have mistaught mm -hmm. generations of young men who grow up and perpetuate the same uh, faux semblance of what it means to be the head of a household. But first of all, bro, you got to be married first to be head of any household. Okay? So again, you know, that part keeps being left out. It's Thank not the one that yeah. people harp on. It's not the one that people talk about. Mm -hmm. But it needs to be talked about because there's more to just uh, why I submit to your husbands. It's more than that. It's so much more than that. What mm -hmm. Paul was talking about, what God was talking about, but people conveniently leave that out because people keep trying to translate the Bible. It for doesn't apply. It doesn't apply to an egotistic male. It doesn't apply. You you have to leave that part out in order for that other part to stand firm for mm -hmm. a person like that. And mm -hmm. that's the thing about the Bible that people go in and they pick those particular scriptures that apply to what they're wanting and needing. And so, again, and I say this and um, to where... I can't expect her to feed into me if I don't feed into her. Exactly. And that is that is my job to do when I wake up in the morning. And I, I and if I am looking for her to be to any form of use to me, I have to take care of her myself as if though I want her to take care of me. And so again, and I tell her and over and over and I tell everybody, my job, I wake up in the morning is to re-love her all over again because I feel that puts me in the position to one, things can happen the day before, things can happen at night to where her ideal of the world changes. For me, that makes her a new person who wakes up in the morning. So now I got to figure out how to love her again. And so her place for me is beside and always will be beside because if she's behind me, then, you know, yeah, going back to, I can even bring back what he was talking about with the protecting and, you know, the bullet situation and cer certain circumstances, the way that he used that, that still doesn't mean that she's behind him. It's just the fact that she knows, okay, my man finna go handle that down there. So yes, let me go grab the kids. That's still a partnership. But he's this, he's um he's he's um damn, what's the word I'm looking for? Um narcissistic, self-serving, misinformed. <laughs> misinformed and and telling and using something that is factual, factual and oh. turning into something totally yeah. not true. Cause again, like I just I call that I call that intellectual dishonesty. Yeah, because I do. Too. He, he's over applying something in a in a context in which it doesn't make the sense. He's trying to force it to make well, he, given he, his application. He's, he's intentionally manipulating it. To yeah. serve his own needs and purpose. Okay. And that is so yeah. dangerous. That yes. is, and that is so dangerous. I feel like when you have a platform, you owe it to yourself to be responsible on that platform. Absolutely. Because what you say 
carries. I know that every time I do this show, even if anyone, if no one does, if no one doesn't watch it live, I know I have enough of a cachet that people go back and watch it later. Yeah. So I have to be responsible with what I say when I'm up here, because there are people who are hanging on to that, who are looking to connect with something, looking to believe in something, looking to gain clarity about something, and then here this guy comes and he's misappropriating and misapplying what I believe is to be a true biblical principle from God, but people love to say, people love to say well, why you got to bring God into it, or it ain't about being a Christian or not, but yet you want to hold to something that has roots in God's principles. That's right. Call it that, but you want to give, but you want to hold on to that, and then you're going to uh, misinterpret intentionally what mm -hmm. it means for your own self gain. And I can't respect so exactly. people who do that. I can't respect it. It's a lot of. Ryan, and, and, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Larry. I was just finna. I was just finna um, add a little bit of that. Was like one of the main reasons why I wanted to um, bring this to the table because. You know, we have we have a lot of information out there stirring around where, you know, women, you know, protect protect your king, stand up for your king, but she can't stand up for you if she's constantly being beaten down, pushed down, forced down, held down in order for you to look great. And um it was one thing and you can get it, Miss uh Evelyn where I um, wrote, where um, I stated, um, where is that? You know, let's be honest, true enough, men can be smart, but women have been pulling strings behind closed door in this country's operation for many years. And, you know, for, if you want to read a little bit more in the um, Jezebel stereotype, um, it's kind of a um, brief description on how and not trying to bring race in the situation, which it is still a big part, how um, white women and men saw black women as sex slaves or just sex objects. And it's just something that just rained down, just went, came down the river. And unfortunately, you know, black males have picked up that same um, ideology and, and, and using it in the black community, like it's something that's, um, that was already deep rooted and that they can't break. I think a lot of them just choose not to. One of the reasons I believe they choose not to break that um, stereotype and to dispense with that, um, to dismiss with that ideology is, it suits their sexual desires. Mm -hmm. They don't have to stop doing it if it feels good to them and they can convince everybody else that this is how it's supposed to be. Unfortunately, some women have adopted that notion as well. And there mm -hmm. are women who believe this, these errors, and it's harder to convince her that she's been deceived about what her value really is than to tell this man to make the choice to treat her right. Those are discussions that self has to die. And when we start talking about that, we introduce spiritual principles again. And mm -hmm. it's funny how often spiritual principles are, are, are present in discussions that we believe are social issues. But what, um, the last thing I wanted to say on one of these points was that when it becomes convenient and when their convenience is the priority, they're not going to see anything else. They're not going to want to come away from doing that, even if they know it's wrong. In order to continue it in that way then, they have to start making excuses. They have to start desensitizing themselves to those individuals like we were talking about before. Race comes up in a lot of these social discussions also because it's a similar construct. Yes. The, the entity that has the narrative control is the one who determines how that narrative is cast. 
as long as white people have most of the resources, they're going to tell the stories that black people are wrong. As long as men have all of the resources, they're going to say that women has a place and it's not at work. It's in the house. And that's only where it's supposed to be. You fight an uphill battle trying to get underneath those beliefs and uproot them because they're 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 intrinsic to a selfish nature. And that's what we're really dealing with as manifest through a number of these premises. You can just go ahead and say that, Brian. Um, it's actually in the description as well about the um, dominant nature of men and whatnot. Well, you can speak on that. Well, my thing is, I was putting that in this chat because um, as I was thinking about what I was talking about, um, the false prophecy of Brother Ken Samuels, um, I, was, I thought this quote by Machiavelli, uh, that men are so simple of mind and so much dominated by their immediate needs that a deceitful man will always find will always find plenty who are ready to be deceived. Um, and if you think about it, that's why people were able to twist religion to 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 justify uh, their sexual um, the sexual deviancies, which you know caused polygamous camps and which caused old men to think it was okay to have sex with young uh, virgin girls and add them as multiple wives and then kick the boys out so they wouldn't have any competition. Like, you know, these things happen because of this principle right here. And I yes. tell people all the time, you know, you have to be willing to truly think for yourself. And I tell the students that I teach, group think is, is, is the cause of the destruction in this world. When you have people who are willing to go along just to get along and go along with things that deep down in your intuition you know is wrong, but because you don't want to be the person who catches the darts for stepping out and speaking up against something that's wrong, that's how these things keep happening. So that's why I put that quote in there. Absolutely. And that's Absolutely. like one of the reasons why I did the video that I did on my page about um, saying um, not wanting to be a coward. Um, anymore due to the fact that knowing that stuff like this needs to be talked about and not wanting to be the one that talk about it because then you you may lose supposed friends or you may get chastised about talking about this so I'm like you know what if if you're not on a bandwagon because I'm speaking something that seems to rub you the wrong way then obviously I, I don't need to have you in my presence in the first place. And I think this is one of those things that definitely men push to the side too much. Mm -hmm. I've seen too many loving women that I know personally that are imprisoned by themselves due to because they feel and believe what their man is telling them to be so. And it's something like what Kevin is doing just like I I just don't it is it, beyond me why women constantly go up there just it's like oh I gotta prove him wrong I gotta prove him wrong just to go up there knowing that if you disagree with me all I gotta do is just press my button you gone and that's pretty much what he does he allows like Brian said he allows you to get on long enough so that I can belittle you and if it seems that you may be getting a point in Oh, I got, oh I, let me cut you off. Oh, I, I, I gotta cut it. And, and, you, I, and, and you'll be surprised how many women you find who actually agree with some of the things he yes. says. Um, yes. but not only that, it just really goes to show you how society, how the patriarchal society has really, really ingrained in woman that her self worth and validation is tied to her ability to get, maintain. And satisfy her man solely. And it's yep. just it's just mind boggling to me. Mind boggling. I you are absolutely right. I was speaking on that just a little bit in the um conversation. And one of the things that I've realized in recent weeks, particularly with the <laughs> demise of Derek Jackson and now <laughs> Kevin Samuels and his new breed of foolishness. <laughs> With Derrick Jackson, the man was always wrong. 
he's not loving her right. He's not listening. He's not doing whatever he's supposed to do. And he was he, talking about himself. The women, yeah, we that that he's the person who could do those things that her man just isn't getting right. Now we jump all the way over to the other extreme where it's Kevin Samuels. The woman is always wrong. She's never in her place. She's not listening. She's never been trained submission. She doesn't know how to do this and she doesn't know how to do that. The problem with both of these fallacies is very simple. Everybody knows that relationships are two way streets. Relationships yep. take both people to work and you have Derek Jackson on one side blaming the men, Kevin Samuels on the other side blaming all the women. You'll never have a solid relationship listening to either one of them because they're imbalanced. My approach to it is, as we've been talking about my book, is that both people need to recognize where they need to grow, bring that growth to the table as a relationship component so that the forward movement is together in unison in harmony, not one being dragged behind the other. That's totally correct. I um, um, We're at our end point, but I definitely... Um, I, and that was kind of my point with the Adam and Eve situation where if both definitely the man took that responsibility like he should have, I really feel as though it wouldn't have been, the punishment would have been as bad. And that's something like our kids. We tell our kids, if you go ahead and tell me right now, instead of waiting five years for me to find out or two weeks later for me to find out and the punishment is going to be worse. So I don't think it might not even be in, to a degree of them being kicked out of Eden if they would have just stepped out. Hey, hey, you know, we did wrong. But that just opened the door for what we have now. But that doesn't mean that we can't break it. That's and the point. door is open up for us to break it. And so for, for people like um, the Obamas to come out and show and her to do her book the way that she did. You know, I, I saw this, you know, at least it kind of did me the same way. Um, I, I hear your, I, I hear your, I hear your goals. I, I, I see your dreams. I see you sitting up here telling me that uh, I'm supposed to be your wife and all that, but I don't see it. Hey, you know, you just gonna have to prove me type thing. And my thing is a lot of men run from that. You know, cause they should just automatically just bow down. I don't want her to do that. You know, I, m me proving to her is more important or me not even just, just proving to myself that I can do exactly what I told her that I came to do is more important than me just speaking out words and wanting her to just to, to agree to it. That's my end point. To those. And, so, and I'm also say this too, right? Uh, ironically, today is the 10-year anniversary of when I successful, successfully defended my dissertation and thus became Dr. Dawson. Let me explain something to you. I am not Dr. Dawson if it wasn't for Sharice Dawson. From the very beginning, my wife encouraged me. She pushed me. She, uh, you know, motivated me. There were times I wanted to quit. There were times I was going to throw in the towel. But this woman believed in me and believed in what I could achieve. And here I am today. And I'm not standing here with that achievement without my wife. Like, without her being there. So there's no such thing as telling her, oh, you know, this is your place. Her place is her place is to grow with me. Her place yeah, there you is go. right beside me, encouraging me, and but and I have to return that favor. Yes. And I have to sow into her too. Like yes. it has to be deposits and withdrawals. It can't just always be withdrawals. And it seems like yes. a lot of men use submission to yes. withdraw so much and then once you know what it is you take you if you do if you deplete this bank account over here if you got another they over go here, to a whole nother bank a whole nother bank account right so if, I, so if i deplete this woman of everything to where now even now that she has no value all i'm gonna go is go over here and find someone else now who has something i can withdraw from mm -hmm. and, so, and so my thing is that is 
so dishonest and disingenuous for men to want to, to do that to women. Yeah. You know, that's why, that's why Angela Bassett was burning the clothes up on Michael Beach and on uh, Wayne Next Head. that company, and when he determined that she no longer had value, he went somewhere else. And then he wondered why yeah. she burned his clothes and burned his car. And not to that bring up this point, say. the um, uh, it's just like signing a prenup. I, I it's, I'm cause okay, uh, and, and, and we're and we're done after this cause I, I it's and I wanted to say that earlier we was talking about the uh, uh Brian, you were saying something about giving part of uh the state and stuff and you know now men hey women too again like uh, miss evelyn said you know um women have gotten tired of being mistreated and, and pushed back so i'm gonna play the game as good as you and so they've this they it's sad and, and it's like brian said it's just it's, it's just hurtful because you can see where it can be so much better. And I see so many couples that are doing that partnership and how great they're succeeding in life. And then you go see where, yeah, this man is head of the house. He's making all this money. But then you start looking at the kids and then you start looking at the wife and seeing how damaged they are. Heck, the wife may, if not the man, have a side piece. The wife got a side piece as well. They don't know what their kids doing because they're not in tune mentally. And so that opens the door for a lot of that one-sidedness of, well, I can just come home and just sit down while all of y'all just do my bidding type thing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that is. So you go that ahead. Is that is absolutely right. And I was hopeful that I would get the opportunity to offer this statement and clarity of some of the things that people have said against women on this issue. There have been mm -hmm. people who believe that women are not as committed to relationships the way that they used to be because now they have degrees, now they have education, now they have resources, now they have options. One of the ways that I would like to dismantle that fallacy in its misapplication is that the resources that women have now that they didn't have in past generations have not affected her willingness to commit to someone. What they have allowed her to do is have a way out of his abuse. Yep. Yep. That is what is happening when women are leaving relationships because they can afford their own place. They can afford yep. their own car. They can afford yep. their own clothes and food and all of those types of things. I don't in need the you. 30s, 40s, 50s, et cetera, women didn't have that option to leave when her husband was unfaithful because she didn't have money. She didn't have resources like that. Most of the women you talk to today still want to get married. They still want to have that relationship, that partner, that person. So the fact that she has resources hasn't done anything to dampen her desire for marriage. It's only enabled her to get out from under infidelity and abuse. When people say that women only want to, they, they don't want marriage because they can have their own, they're missing the point of what these men have done to these women. They're missing the point of how they, they that the men have projected upon to her his infidelity as a condition of their relationship. If she says, I don't want to deal with that and have a, and has a reason of resources to go, then she has every capability of leaving, but she's leaving the abuse, not the willingness to be in a committed relationship. That point is lost when we're talking about issues like this usually. And I, and I know we got to go, but I want to add this too. I never forget years ago, um, I was working, it was about 10, 12 years, it was about maybe 11 years ago, maybe when I was engaged to Cherise, uh, one of my um, immediate supervisors, uh, she had talked about how she used to be engaged. So I asked her one day and I said, well, what happened? And she said, I didn't trust his leadership. And that ministered to my soul because I was like, wow, that means I have to make sure because if I want this woman to be with me, I gotta make sure that I'm fit to be someone 
she'll be willing to submit to and not submit in the in in sense of obey. Good night. All right. Not in the sense of obey, but just to be able to trust that right. I, I'm not leading her off a cliff. And I, and that comes with some self-reflection. It also comes with eating some crow. And there's a lot of men who just aren't willing to be self-reflective or eat or crow. Right. Or come back and say, you know what? Yeah, you might be right about that. And you have to be willing to do that. And that doesn't make you weak. It makes you strong to acknowledge and understand that maybe had you probably listened to some wise counsel from the woman that you asked God for, then yep. maybe you wouldn't have to have gone down this road. Absolutely. Absolutely agree. Well, guys, um, again, the um, I didn't, and on purpose, didn't go all the way in detail on the description that I uh, placed. Um, but all by all means go back and read some of that information. It's some great information I came across. Um, it was just open the door and the Kevin Samuel um, video opened the door for me and Lisa to uh, talk about seriously, you know, the, the man ideals of a woman's place. Um, this season, not only on the podcast, but the um, sofa real talk is about changing the narrative. And we have to change the narrative of how men look at women. And definitely with me having sons, I constantly, I'm constantly talking to my boys about not using women as um, pieces of meat um, because you wouldn't want it to be done. That, or, or matter of fact, you wouldn't want your mom to be treated like that, especially if you love your mom. I mean, it, unfortunately, there are some cases where boys uh, and mom are not in, in good standings, but um, majority of the time, men love the heck out of their um, moms and they wouldn't want that to happen to their mom or better yet, their daughter. So you going out and doing the things that um, Brian is referring to are the the banks. Um, ladies, you have more control than you think. And sometimes at the hour banks are not great so you know um yeah. so, some bank contracts and and and, uh, and and open accounts are not good you need to go ahead and close those accounts and uh and it's not trying to bash any men it's bashing it you know what yes it is it is bashing men it's bashing those men that are doing it deliberately because there are some men out there that are like and not to boast myself up but I'm like Brian, even though I know who I am, definitely now, but where I'm at now on top of who I know I am, I'm not saying that I couldn't have done it without her, but I wouldn't be where I'm at as fast as I am because I have someone that's a go-getter like I am and that sees as much of a vision as I see it. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, Miss Evelyn, outside of your book that everybody needs to go and to her website <laughs> and get, um, can they find you anywhere else? I can be followed on Facebook at Evelyn Whitney Books and on Twitter and Instagram at E Whitney Books. And I just began a YouTube channel. It is Evelyn Whitney. Oh, and what about you? Um. Dr. Brian, sir. Yes. Uh, yeah. So I'm still working on my uh profile, but if you want to catch me on IG, I'm um young uh underscore doc 40 on IG. All right. Uh so you can catch me there. So you know, I'm just listen, I am living my best life right now. I really do enjoy doing these things. Uh I you know, people have told me I probably should do this more full time. And we'll see what happens. I'm I'm waiting on I'm waiting on God to um, speak to me on that. Well, hey, uh, sometimes God is speaking to you. Just ignore it. And that's exactly what I've been doing. And he done hit me upside the head too many times. And so I, I'm, I'm, I'm done. I'm, I'm done <laughs> running. And so it's wide open from this point on. And so uh, with that being said, guys, you know, you can catch us on the Soul For Real Talk. And anywhere podcast wise, the Soul For Pillar Talk. 
and on IG and TikTok as Mr. and Mrs. Take Over the World. Um, next week, I there's something that I got to do. So Wednesday may not be booked, but I will let you guys know by um, Sunday, um, guys. And it's not, um, I'm not saying that you two are, it's, it's just, just in general. Mm -hmm. um, but with that being said, great show. Thank you guys again for coming on. I, I, I love it. Um, and if you Always. want to be a part of this show, please definitely hit me up. I'm sorry, Ms. Evelyn, go ahead. I was saying it's definitely a pleasure. Thank you for having us. I love oh, it. Always. We're gelling, guys. We're gelling. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. I actually got to go myself. I got to do some baking. So um, good night, and you guys have a great day.